In this lecture, we look at how different pea sources would affect pea storage and release from impacted soils. And when you know, when we talk about pea releases, naturally it means how it's going to impact the water quality when it um, moves from the soil to a nearby water body. The inorganic versus organic pea sources, I explained a little bit in the next few slides. Pea loss from a soil depends on a number of properties, a number of factors, and they include the solubility of the pea in the source, the soil characteristics of the pea application site. Many states, including Florida, have adopted a pea index as a risk assessment too. We have looked at this much earlier. One component of the p-index is the p-source coefficient, a weighting factor that accounts for differences in p-solubility among various organic and inorganic p-sources. You might recall that when we discussed the p-index, I did mention about the p-source coefficient. Now, in the state, manure and inorganic fertilizers are the two most commonly land applied sources in the state. When we look at manure components, we need to see how the P is associated with the cations. And P in manure is associated either in the calcium mag or magnesium form or the iron and aluminum forms. P is associated weakly with calcium and magnesium and loses P continuously when manure is in contact with water. We discussed this in Module 3, Lecture 2. The P associated with iron and aluminum is more stable, and the most stable form of P in manure is referred to as residual P. Let's now look at the solubility of different manure types. The total P, let's say in a dairy manure, it is perhaps higher than the total P in a beef manure. These are relative terms, there may, there may be slight changes. But if you look at the label P fraction in the dairy manure, it is much less than the label P fraction in the beef manure. Remember here again, just as I've explained before, when we look at either of the label P fractions, we need to take into consideration the total P to get the absolute value. You'll also notice that the calcium magnesium P in the dairy is much greater than the calcium magnesium P in the beef manure, and that small amounts of organic P and iron and aluminum P exist in both the dairy and beef manure. Also, residual P fractions are comparable for dairy and beef manure. So why the solubility differences between dairy and beef manure? This difference in solubility is likely related to the supplements provided to lactating dairy cows compared with the nature of the calcium magnesium P associated with forage consumption of free roaming animals. In this regard, it is um, important to mention that the P solubility of beef manure would differ substantially depending on their diet and therefore uh, getting absolute values from different locations may not be comparable. <clears throat> Next, we look at the solubility of common P sources. Uh, the P solubility of these sources are in a water extraction at a 1 to 10 ratio. I specify 1 to 10 once again because depending on the ratio, you may get a difference in absolute values. If you look at this table here, we have a pea source, which is a compost, two types of manures, a dairy and a poultry, two types of 
biosolids, amylognite and orlando, and a concentrated superphosphate that is the inorganic fertilizer or TSP. If we take a look at the water soluble P, you will find a very big variation. The first thing that you probably want to look at is the dairy and the poultry manure. You find that the water extractable P in the poultry manure is much greater than that in the dairy manure. And then you will notice that the black cow compost has similar solubility as the dairy manure in this particular situation. Most interesting, however, is the look at biosolids, the biosolids 1 and biosolids 2. The difference in water soluble P is very, very different. And of course, the superphosphate or the inorganic fertilizer, the water soluble P is the highest. That's something we know because it is extremely and completely soluble. Now here comes the thing that we need to take a look at. We just cannot say we are applying biosolids and based on the information we have in one of the biosolids, you cannot just take it over to a second or from a different source. The same with manure source. Now, here is the comparison of different forms of extractable P, that is the total P, the malic 1P, and water soluble P for the source materials. Now, you will notice the wide differences in these values. The bottom figure is for only water soluble P and malic 1P, just to provide a better resolution. Error bars are standard deviations, and you can now see how different these values can be. Now let us look at P losses from different P sources in an actual experiment that was conducted. Soil was removed from a poorly drained, unimpacted, immokly fine sand to a depth of 20 centimeters and repacked in boxes. 100 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters, as you see in the lower picture. Approximately 80 kilograms of soil on a dry weight basis were placed in containers instrumented to collect surface runoff, subsurface flow, and leachate. Equal amounts of total P, that's approximately 300 kilograms per hectare, or 900 grams per box for all sources were added to the containers and these were done in triplicates. Then rainfall was applied to these containers with a simulator design that is used throughout the US. So rainfall was added to these boxes <clears throat> and you will see that you can collect uh, subsurface drainage as well as leachate in this particular design. And we ran a series of seven simulations for each of the designated treatments to study leaching of P. P leached during the rainfall simulation. So what did we notice? Total soluble P and Orlando biosolids leached the highest amount of P in the beginning as compared to other P sources. P concentrations declined with successive rainfall stimulation leaching events. The amount of P leached increased with successive leaching events for dairy manure, black cow compost, and the two biosolids, where it actually decreased. Leached P correlated significantly with the water soluble P of the P sources rather than the total P. Now this is one thing that has to be remembered. We place a lot of importance on total P, but as far as its negative impact on the environment, it is not the total P that is important, but merely the releasable P, such as a water extractable P. Now let us look at the P sources and SPSC, how SPSC is affected 
by the P sources. Uh, the figure shows the SPSC on the Y axis, the various P sources on the X axis, and the, the storage capacity expressed as milligrams of P per box. And the different colors are for the different depths of this uh, rainfall simulation boxes. You know, the box was about 20 centimeter deep. And at the end of the experiment, we just divided them, subdivided them into five centimeter increments. And the increments are from right to left here in the legend, zero to five centimeters, five to 10 centimeters, 10 to 15 centimeters, and greater than 15 centimeters. What we notice here is the remaining capacity of the soil to store P increased as, to, uh, as the superphosphate, dairy manure, poultry manure, Orlando biosolid, milorganite biosolid, black cow compost, and finally a control. We had a control incorporated in this design. In other words, when there was no P added to the control, it maintained its original SPSC. Now, soils with TSPS amendment had no remaining SPSC. Some remaining P storage was available for the dairy and poultry manure and the Orlando biosolid treatment, while the mill organite biosolid, black cow compost, and the control had remaining P storage at all the depths within the 20 centimeter soil profile. In other words, they had not been, the depths up to 20 had not been completely exhausted with the P. It comes as no surprise that the total phosphorus, uh, the total superphosphate, uh, there is no remaining capacity because of the solubility of the superphosphate. It's very highly soluble and it has compromised the entire 20 centimeter depth of the soil in this particular experiment in of rainfall simulation. And now let us look at P losses from biochar. Biochar is actually a P source as we have seen earlier. If you look at the water soluble P of the two biochars which we had looked at earlier, that is the hardwood biochar and the poultry litter biochar, the water soluble P values are different. And in this case, it shows that the poultry litter biochar has a greater solubility than the hardwood biochar. The same is true for total P and the malic 3 P uh, that we have seen before. And therefore, just like any of the other P sources, biochar P sources should also take taken into consideration when land applied. And now to summarize, the P source characteristics, including P solubility, must be accounted for when evaluating P loss risk during land application of organic amendments. The amount of P leached correlated significantly with water soluble P concentration, but not with total P concentration. The remaining P storage capacity of a soil is a function of the solubility of the P source rather than the total P. Remember, that's exactly what we did in the rainfall simulation experiment and showed the differences in the remaining P storage capacity or SPSC. Finally, here are some of the references in this particular lecture.